Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. The good shepherd calls his sheep by names. Listen, for our shepherd is calling. Anybody that's grieving, striving, just remember this one thing. Our lives are in the hands of the Lord. Amen. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. Oh, there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know, I know I can make it. 
I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands With Jesus I can take it With Him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way my life is in your hands so when your tests and trials they seem to get you down and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found remember there's a friend in jesus who will wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken just lift your hands and say oh i know that i can make it I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands With Jesus I can take it With Him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way my life is in your hands oh i know know that i can make it i know that i can't stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands with jesus i can take it with him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands I know, I know I can make it Lord, I know that I can stand Cause no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands lord with jesus i can take it with him i know i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in your hands my life my life it's in your hands. No matter what's going on these days, in these crazy times, you put your hand in the hand of the Lord, the one who stills the water, that calms the seas. You know you can make it. Amen. Have a blessed day. The gospel reading today is from John 10, verses 1 through and hear now this word of God. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out 
and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. Please join me in my prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, let us center ourselves in your presence and listen to your still voice in this beautiful morning. Amen. Um, the high school that I attended a long time ago had high walls around the school buildings and playground. And the, the high school only had one gate. And at the gate, there was a reception desk and always somebody was there to guard the gate. The guard's main job was to protect students from strangers coming in, but I think his another main job was uh, to keep an eye out for students to see if any of the students sneaks out of the school. One day I was at school studying, taking all the classes, and I so wanted to go home. In Korea, high school students stay at school really, really long time, almost all day, and that exhausted me. So, I don't know why I decide like that. I decide to sneak off and go home. So I didn't want to do that by myself, so I convinced one of my friends that it would be fun if we go home right now and nobody would notice us not being in the classroom. She joined me in that plan of creeping out. But at the gate, this notorious guard was keeping the gate. There was no way they, that he would let us sneak off. There was no way for us to go through the gate. But I knew there was a part of the walls that was lower than other walls that we could just jump over. So we decided to jump out of that wall. My friend and I quietly approached the wall, carefully hopped on, on the wall, and jumped down to the other side of the wall, shouting with joy of success. In today's gospel, Jesus talked about thieves and bandits that climb a fence to come into the pen, but there are lambs that jump over the fence to run away. We thought we succeeded, but we actually failed. Because right at the moment when we jumped off, my homeroom teacher was passing by that wall. He was coming back from his lunch. We almost jumped on him. Of course, he dragged us back to the classroom and yeah, made a joke about that for that entire year. He didn't call my parents, thankfully. So we always have walls around us, right? Walls define who is in and who's out. Walls tell us we, what we have and what we do not have. Walls of our place gives us a sense of comfort and safety that we are in a place where we're supposed to be, where we feel safe. When we are in a place that is well surrounded by walls and roofs, we feel protected from winds, cold weather, and other threats. However, in order for walls to be useful, we need a gate where we can get in and out, where we can connect to the world and others. Without a gate, walls are useless. In today's gospel, Jesus says, I am the gate. And he continues to say that all who don't come through him are thieves and bandits. What does he mean here? What are thieves and bandits that jump over a fence, not coming through the gate? Let's think about them. We often don't know thieves have been here until later, right? When they come, they come in the night 
when we are unaware or fall asleep. And then one day we wake up and realize something precious is stolen, something is gone. And we wonder what happened to my life? How did I get to this point? How did I not know that my life became this messy? Maybe we were too busy catching up with other people's expectations on us. Maybe we take relationships for granted. Maybe we were too comfortable or we were too preoccupied with the wrong person or wrong thing. We were not paying deep attention to ourselves. We don't realize our life is stolen until it is too late. Thieves don't look strange. They often wear the disguise of what's familiar with us, like money, work, productivity, a relationship, meeting others' needs and expectations, saying yes and being available all the time, striving for quality in what we do. There is nothing wrong with any of those things until they begin to thief our life. And sometimes they do, right? And let's think about bandits. All of us know bandits are coming. They come in the daylight and they don't even try to hide. They steal our joy under our very nose, but we don't do anything to take ours back because they are bandits, they are terrifying. In our lives, it's those times when we feel powerless, even though we know that we can be better than what we are now. It's when we are feeling down and refusing to get back up. It's when we recognize our brokenness and refusing to ask for help. It is when we choose resentment and anger over forgiveness. It's when we feel the pain, but refusing the treatment. It's when we know what will give us hope and life, but giving in to fear and hopelessness. In what ways has your life been stolen? Who or what are the thieves and bandits in your life? Especially in this time with COVID-19, what bandits and thieves have invaded your place? What have they stolen from your life? Inner peace, joy, hope and love, mercy, or abundant life that Jesus promises us? How will we guard our heart against the thieves and bandits that steal our abundant life? So, we are the gatekeepers of our lives. I talked about the notorious gatekeeper at my high school. He wouldn't let any stranger easily in the school and he wouldn't let any of us, the students, easily out either. He guarded the gate to keep us safe while we were at school. We are the gatekeepers of our lives. We guard our life and heart. It means that we need to stay, stay awake, be watchful, and remain diligent. Depending on who or what it is, we either open or our heart or keep it closed. Have you opened your heart in the past that led you to a dead end or even a detour? I, I have. I really have done that before. Have you opened your heart in the past that led you to the green pastures of abundance? I think you have, and I have done that too. We all have those experiences in our life. The gate in our life are threshold places where we meet the people, opportunities, possibilities, and choices they need our discernment. It's where we constantly need to make decisions, whether open the gate or close the gate. 
How might my life change if I open? How might I miss if I close? Do I have to open the gate to fear to let in? Or do I have to let it open so that I can be led to the pastures of abundance? Good news is that we are not alone in times of discernment in this threshold place. Jesus said, I am the gate. He is the gate that opens and leads to the pastures of abundant life. And he is the gate that stands against death. We open or close in collaboration with Jesus. The sheep follows the shepherd because they know his voice. We know, we, everyone, every one of us know his voice, right? The abundant life that Jesus leads is not about a quantity, but about quality. It's the life that glimpses the divine life. This life is about meaning, purpose, integrity, healing, and wholeness. It's a life that leads to life, love, that leads to love, joy that leads to joy, hope that leads to hope, kindness that leads to kindness, generosity that leads to generosity, a beauty that leads to beauty, and gratitude that leads to gratitude. It does not add to the pain of the world, but it adds to and enhances life our own as well as others. As the quarantine gets longer and with, with all the fast changes in our life situation in light of the quarantine and the coronavirus, we need to be more vigilant at guarding the gate. Let's trust that Jesus the gate will lead us to the abundant life that the world cannot give us, that thieves and bandits cannot steal from us. We are already joining the abundant life by guarding our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. The animals of God's creation inhabit the skies, the earth, and the sea. They share in the fortunes of human existence and have a part in human life. God conferred gifts on all living things, has often used the service of animals or made them reminders of the gifts of salvation. <laughs> animals were saved from the flood and afterwards made a part of I'm the covenant of Noah. Oh, the the Passover bad. lamb recalls the Passover sacrifice and the deliverance of slaves from Egypt. A giant fish saved Noah. Ravens brought bread to Elijah. Animals were included in the repentance of Nineveh, and animals share in Christ's redemption of all God's creation. We therefore invoke God's blessing on these animals, and we do so as we do so. Let us praise the Creator and thank God for setting us as stewards 
over all the creatures of the earth. Would you please join in this prayer to bless our pets? Let us pray. God created us and placed us on the earth to be stewards of all living things. Oh God, how wonderful are the works of your hands. Blessed are you, the Lord of the universe. You create the animals and give us the ability to train them to help us in our work. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You give us food from animals to replenish our energies. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. For the sake of our comfort, you give us domestic animals as companions. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You care for us even as you care for the birds of the air. Blessed are you, O Lord of the universe. You offered your son to us as the Passover lamb, and in him willed that we should be called your children. Blessed, O Lord, these creatures, and fill our hearts with thanksgiving for their being. May you and your animal enjoy life together and find joy with God who created you. Amen. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up, no walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I want to share just briefly about how I started in um, helping out in the church and Pastor Sophia, thank you so much for your message about joy. When I was in high school taking piano lessons, I grew well. I grew up in the church in Sunday school, and the uh, church needed a piano player. This is the Zion United Methodist Church uh, near the Illinois Wisconsin border, and so of course I volunteered and I became the roaming Sunday school teacher, a roaming piano player going from room to room in the Sunday schools. And that was such a joy. And then later in life, when I had children, I volunteered in the nursery when they were very young. And that was the way that I could meet people. And that uh, brought me into a new community in the church. So we are uh, the church in uh, ways we're not in the building. But I hope that you would find some way to have joy in serving others to be a disciple in the world. And um, the church is still alive at this time. And our church and staff have found that uh, there are ways to do ministry that are creative. And our staff has been calling and caring for our congregations and has been recording videos that showcase our talented musicians and staff and also our principal organist, 
Philip Puckner with his impro improvisations on several hymns. So during this time, lift up the church and its staff in your prayers as they continue new ways to serve, including Bible study online and prayer meetings online. We also ask that you continue to care and support for Chicago Temple financially. Your continued support allows the pastors to continue to serve in the community. And we are so thankful for your support. So I, I refer you to the Chicago Temple website that has the various ways that you can contribute to our ongoing church ministry. And of course, we can still receive mail if you would like to send out your uh, financial donations directly to the church please be sure to indicate second floor on your envelope. God bless you and thank you for your support and your service in the church. I invite you to pray with me. We thank you, Jesus, for being our good shepherd, even though we balk at being compared to sheep. Thank you for giving us abundant life, even as we walk through death shadow valleys. Thank you for knowing us by name, even though we sometimes forget yours. Claim us and guide us every day. As our faithful shepherd, protect, guide, and bless us. Give us grace under pressure so that even our enemies' hearts may repent of evil deeds. As the good shepherd of this congregation, lead us with your word. Teach us to do your will with glad and faithful hearts and use us to lead still others into your safekeeping. Lead us all, especially our younger ones, O oh Lord. Defend us from every enemy that tempts to cause us to stray from your side. Channel our energies, idealism, and curiosity into ventures that glorify you and lift up others. We pray that you would protect the people of every nation from false shepherds, from rulers who care nothing for their welfare, and from all the threatening dangers of this world. Bring peace in places of violence, rich pasture in places of poverty, and true righteousness and places of injustice. We recognize you as our shepherd who leads us through dark valleys shadowed by suffering. Be the strong guide and sure comfort of all who call upon you this day. Fill all with your abundant light. As you prepare a table for us in the presence of our last enemy, even death itself, thank you for leading home all who listen to your voice in the, this earthly life be our good shepherd too teach us to hear your voice nourish us at your table and defend us from every enemy and now we remember the prayer that you gave us to pray through the ages our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come through the gate of joy and hope. Moving into the world that needs to hear the word of peace. Go in peace to all God's people, bringing good news of Christ's abundant love for them. Amen.